October 18th, reports from the Hong Kong Consumer Council warn of genotoxic carcinogens. Cancer-causing compounds like glycidol or acrylamide or both are found in 60 pre-packaged biscuits and crackers. Some of the biscuit brands are popular household names that are sold in Singapore. So, following the report, the Singapore Food Agency released a statement saying that there is no conclusive evidence that the two compounds mentioned, glycidol and acrylamide, can cause cancer in humans and that biscuits and crackers are safe for consumption when eaten in moderation. Hmm, which makes me wonder, what's really in my biscuits? To start, I want to find out what some of our favourite biscuits are. This is double mm. chocolate coated biscuit. I eat it about once or twice every week. My favourite biscuit is a butter biscuit. Sometimes I eat two like that. Sometimes I eat bread, I eat biscuit for fun. <laughs> Instead biscuit, sugar, butter I think. It's a vanilla sandwich biscuit. It brings back very, very fond memories. I used to eat this with my kids when they were young. It's very nourishing. This is my favourite biscuit. There is a lot of chocolate. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. It's mainly made out of sugar and it's really delicious and I love chocolate. I grew up eating lemon biscuits. I usually just lick off the lemon fillings and then put the two biscuits aside and then dip it into my coffee. Oh, it's a lot of memory for me. And yeah. If it's for breakfast, it's two, two, yes. So this is my favourite. Uh, I eat this about two to three times a week when I'm feeling a bit hungry but not hungry enough for a meal. I'm actually from Taiwan, so when I first came to Singapore, this is what my Singaporean friends introduced me. And after I tried it, I actually fell in love with it. <laughs> so I had a lot at once, and three to five times a week. Do you all know what's inside your biscuit? Uh, no, I don't know what's inside it. Flour? Some of our favourite biscuits include biscuits with vanilla, chocolate or lemon fillings, butter biscuits, vegetable biscuits and iced gems. So I want to find out what's in them. Helping me is Dr Mary Chong. She rarely eats biscuits and that's because she knows everything hidden within. We've gathered the top five most popular biscuit types, namely cream crackers, savoury biscuits, biscuits with sweet fillings or coatings, digestives, and lastly, sugared biscuits. Three of these biscuit types were mentioned by our biscuit lovers. The rest are top-selling biscuits according to Singapore's leading supermarket chains. Most biscuits, they contain three main ingredients. That's wheat flour, vegetable oil, as well as sugar. So let's start with wheat flour first. Wheat flour is grind from wheat. It's actually a refined carbohydrate. So that means that the wheat has been processed and as a result, it removes two components of wheat, which is the germ and the bran layer, where all the goodness and all the nutrients are. So really what's left in the wheat flour, it will really just be endosperm component, which is mostly just carbohydrates and some protein. So next, vegetable oil. The most common use in biscuits is actually palm oil. It's semi-solid at room temperature, which explains why the biscuits just melt deliciously in our mouth when we crunch into it. And importantly, palm oil also helps basically increase the shelf lives of biscuits. Mm. However, palm oil does have higher saturated fat content. Lastly, let's talk about something that we have a love-hate relationship with, sugar. Sugar is empty calories. These can lead to basically weight gain. In addition, taking too much high sugar products can also lead to spikes in our blood sugar levels and actually increase one's person's risk of diabetes. Mm -hmm. Is there any other ingredient that is not so commonly known but we should still be careful about? Yes, some biscuits do contain what we call hydrogenated oil. There are two kinds of uh, hydrogenated oils, partially hydrogenated as well as the fully hydrogenated oils. The good news is that partially hydrogenated oils, which actually is the source of trans fats, which are harmful, have already been banned from Singapore in prepackaged products, fats and oils since this year. 
However, fully hydrogenated oils are still present uh, in products. Fully hydrogenated oil. That's what manufacturers add into some biscuits to enhance their shelf life, like this biscuit stick with strawberry coating. The process of hydrogenating oil involves adding hydrogen to liquid fat, which are unsaturated fats, turning them into solid fat when at room temperature. But in doing so, the level of saturated fats also increases and risk of heart disease may also increase. I'm looking at this tempting spread yeah, and wondering too. which of these biscuits should I be most careful about? Let's start off with that, that biscuit stick with the strawberry coating. Okay. Yeah. So this is really popular. But if I look at the nutrition information content, it actually has 17 grams of sugar in one pack. But our recommended sugar intake is about 50 grams a day. Secondly, let's look at the biscuit sticks with the dips. Mm. That's quite a hot favourite as well. So yeah, sure. I know. However, I would say this is double trouble. It's both high in sugar as well as sodium. So you want to go easy on these or perhaps basically even better, share this with a friend. Wow, so, really? I know. I'm surprised. We go on next to uh, digestives. Mm. Yes. Just, just hearing the name of it, most of us would think it's healthy. Yeah. And that's because when digestives were first introduced, they were higher in fibre than most other biscuits. But actually, if you compare digestives uh, now with whole wheat crackers, actually the fibre content is not that much higher. Uh, in fact, it does have a bit of fat as well. How do you eat biscuits moderately? We should regard biscuits as treats rather than as a snack that we are taking regularly or on a daily basis. So for me, a treat would be about one to two times a week. So one rule of thumb in general uh, for the portion size of a treat would be to basically consume a snack between 100 to 200 calories uh, per serving. Okay. And so this would translate to about two digestives, for those with uh, sweet fillings, about two to three, depending on the size. And if you're talking about crackers, about two to three crackers. Adults can exercise self-control, but what about kids? Seen these at supermarkets? Well, with so many different types of biscuits targeting children, are our kids eating their way into poor health? Biscuits are not just snacks enjoyed by adults. In fact, there are a lot of biscuits that appear to target children, such as teething rusks, organic rice puffs, and even adorable biscuits shaped like animals for little ones. So I wonder, does the same biscuit limit of no more than twice a week and less than a handful for each serving for adults apply also to children? Dr. Natalie Ann Apton is about to reveal her observations in the paediatric clinic. So Natalie, are our kids eating too much biscuits? I think the short answer to that is yes. I think a lot of people uh, underestimate how much sugar is in biscuits. If you look at the recommendations for sugar intake in children, it may surprise you to know that the current recommendations is no additional sugar for children under the age of two. If you're giving sugar-added biscuits to children under the age of two, that is already more than they should be having, regardless of the quantity. Sugar recommendations for children two to six years of age is 20 grams per day and seven to teenage years is 24 grams a day. For context, 20 grams of sugar would roughly equate to 29 pieces of these iced gems. And 24 grams of sugar would be about 34 iced gems. But the kids are really active, I mean, and they have high metabolism, they're going to burn off the energy, right? There are different types of energy. There's good energy and there's not so good energy. And examples of good energy would be proteins, whole grains, natural sources of sugars such as fruits, vegetables, which are not going to lead to sugar spikes and sugar slumps. So when you give a high sugar food, like a biscuit, you can lead to 
an immediate sugar spike where a child may be very difficult to manage, very high energy, behavioural issues, followed by a glycemic slump which leaves a child feeling fatigued, lethargic a lot of the time. I see parents using biscuits as rewards for good behaviour or even as deterrents for bad behaviour. I see parents using it just to try and keep their child still, which is counterintuitive because if you're giving your child a high sugar snack to get them to stay still, <laughs> that's probably not going to work very well. Uh, I was totally guilty of it. And when I was out in the supermarket, there would be these healthier versions mm. of uh, kiddie biscuits. Would these be better than your regular biscuits? So you have to become quite savvy when you read your ingredients list. So some biscuits may in fact say sucrose, glucose, corn syrup, which most parents will be able to recognise as sugar. Other companies may list it as molasses, fruit purees, fruit concentrates, fruit juices, all of these, because they are not fruit, are very highly concentrated sugars. In fact, many biscuits that are manufactured for children may contain up to 8 to 10 grams per biscuit. Some infant teething rusks contain 8 grams of sugar per biscuit. Wow. Some organic fruit bars contain up to 8 grams of sugar per fruit bar and these are manufactured and uh, marketed as organic, as healthy, as kid-friendly. But um, these are significantly high in sugar. So, it seems if my child is below two years old, I shouldn't be feeding him any biscuits at all. And for older children, biscuits should not be a daily affair. As for me, I need to learn how to read labels better. But you know, sometimes nutritional information can be so wordy and confusing, which is why nutritional claims on packaging such as reduced sugar, whole grain, they all sound so attractive to me. I've brought what I think are healthier biscuit alternatives to a dietitian Ma Wai Yi. She's got the original versions of these same biscuits with her. Hey! Hi! So, I have got this version that is very attractive to me because it says 25% less sugar, which to me is quite substantial. Yes. Can you tell me whether there's actual difference? Yes, so the 25% reduced sugar looks really, really attractive. If you read the fine print here, it's 25% less sugar as opposed to the original. That means for every serving, which is three pieces of Oreos, that's only 2.9 grams less sugar for the reduced sugar version. It's a difference of 2.9 grams. That's probably about half a teaspoon of sugar. I would say that if you're eating only you know, once or twice in a week, the calorie difference between the two is not much. Let's move on to this one. It's also one of my favourite. The calcium bit was what attracted me. You probably chose this because you notice it says cholesterol-free and high in calcium. Mm. If you notice, cream crackers, you don't often find calcium. So it's not a high calcium food source. And for this to be claimed as high calcium, that means it has been fortified. Yes. Extra calcium has been added to these cream crackers. So according to the nutrition label, per serving, which is about three pieces of the biscuits, it gives you extra 130 mg of calcium. 130 mg of calcium, how much is that compared to what we both need in a day? It's recommended that for us, generally, we will need 800 mg to 1000 mg of calcium a day. This really doesn't count much. But it's an added bonus, I would say, if let's say you're really in need of a high calcium intake, yeah. of course, then any little bit would count. Okay, let's move on to this one. This one says baked with 12 grams of whole grain per serving. So it looks attractive, right? 12 grams of whole grains. So for a thing to be whole grain, all right, we should really be looking out for the fibre content as well as the vitamins, especially the B vitamins and also some minerals like your zinc, your iron content. Well, if we look into the details of two products here, for the whole grain, it has 2 grams of fibre. As compared to the original, it has less than 1 gram. But interestingly, if you look at the vitamin content, the whole grain ones actually is lower in the vitamins 
generally except maybe for the potassium as compared to the original one. Why is that so? Could be there's a change in the ingredients that's being used or could be the process that some minerals may be lost. But that's what I'm trying to say that when we look into a product, don't just take whatever that is being printed up front here or the claims that they have. You should really be looking at the nutrition information panel to help you decide which product to choose. We reached out to the companies with our findings. Fairprice says the difference between the cream crackers is due to a difference in the recipes and processes in the making of the products. It adds that the nutritional information printed on their products are in compliance with the labelling guidelines set by authorities. The company behind Oreo Biscuits says Oreo Mildly Sweet was originally designed to cater to consumers' demand for less sweet Oreo biscuits. It adds the company has also adhered to the food regulations definition of less sugar, which is a minimum of 25% less than the standard product. While the company that manufactures goldfish crackers attributed the lesser vitamins found in its baked with whole grain version to a lower amount of enriched white flour, which was replaced with the whole grain flour. As people become increasingly health conscious, some companies are innovating biscuits to be beyond just a decadent snack. There is now a whole line of trending biscuits that promises health with indulgence. I'm about to find out if these biscuits are worth their hype. When these biscuits are made, will the nutrients and the superfoods be lost in the manufacturing process? Conscious consumers are spoiled for choice when it comes to biscuits catering to specific health needs. For example, there's a growing number of stores offering gluten-free biscuits. In fact, one of Singapore's larger supermarket chains, Sheng Xiong, told me they saw a 14% increase in sales of their house brand multi-grain biscuits compared to 2020. Javier Tan is a self-taught home baker who has over 15,000 followers on his Instagram. Tana, chocolate crinkle cookies and these chocolate crinkle cookies are served. Um, top off with powdered sugar for an extra snowy and Christmassy touch. He sells his own bakes and has been keeping a pulse on the latest bake trends. What are some of the trending biscuits on the shelves right now? For a start, we have biscuits with superfood and chia seeds and flax seeds incorporated in them. So superfood as a term itself convey that there might be better health benefits as well as antioxidant properties. Okay, superfoods. What else have you got for me? Right, so apart from that, we also have the gluten-free options that we can find in uh, supermarkets. They are actually made for people who have celiac disease. They are allergic to gluten itself. Mm. Do you find that people who do not have celiac disease are also eating uh, gluten-free bakes? From what we observe, I would say yes, especially since um, there's a lot of packaging that says gluten-free. So that might lead them to think that, oh, gluten might not be good for you. What else have you got for me? And finally, another diet that we observe is the keto diet. So for keto diet, they can only consume a low amount of carbs, about 20 to 50 grams a day. So sugar, of course, that's a carb as well, and it can be found in biscuits. Mm. So for today, I have brought keto biscuits. They are low in sugar. These keto biscuits only have 2.6 grams of sugar per 100 grams. That's way below our daily sugar limit of about 50 grams. These biscuits certainly sound great, but some don't come cheap. For example, the Keto Chocolate Hazelnut Biscuits cost almost $14 per 150 grams. As compared to a regular chocolate hazelnut sandwiched cracker, which is almost $3 for 180 grams. That is more than four times cheaper. Before I put my money into it, I want to find out if these biscuits are even necessary for someone like me. Dr. Ravindran Rakesh used to practice keto himself. I wonder if he would buy into any of this hype. 
I've brought you these biscuits, the superfood. Uh -huh. uh, these are the gluten-free biscuits and these are the so-called keto biscuits. Let's start with the biscuits with superfoods. Sure. Are they worth the hype? At this point, I would say that uh, those who really want to have a quick fix, enjoy the convenience of having a nutrient-dense uh, item that they can just carry along with them and have it uh, as and when they want, then I think uh, superfood biscuits are a good choice. So I'm looking at these. I'm just curious, when these biscuits are made, will the best part of it, i.e. the nutrients and the superfoods, will that be kind of lost in the manufacturing process? It goes down to the uh, micronutrient level. So if you look at it in terms of uh, water-soluble versus fat-soluble vitamins, uh, for example, processing generally gets rid of lots of water-soluble vitamins like B vitamins, and sometimes even vitamin C, and sometimes they end up having to put these back in to fortify uh, these uh, products at the end of the process of manufacturing. So let's say I'm really interested in biscuits with superfoods. What should I be looking out for? You should be looking out for basic things like how many various types of vitamins or minerals they contain. But the problem is that each and every uh, vitamin or mineral, there is something called a recommended daily uh, intake. And then, uh, you know, you may see values like more than 100% and it will make you feel falsely reassured that there's lots of nutrition in this but majority of the time there's this concept of uh, something called bioavailability availability, which uh, means that not everything that you eat actually gets into your bloodstream so your intestines can only absorb a certain amount it's a new uh, concept to me. So it's called bioavailability. Yes, exactly. And, and that means it's, there's yes. only this much a body can absorb in a day. Perfect way of putting it. Let's move on to the gluten-free biscuits. Recently, gluten-free diets have been very much popular or That's faddish. Right. Some people may be turning to gluten-free biscuits because mm. they think that these are healthier option. What is your thought? It can be healthier for people, obviously, with, you know, for example, celiac disease, because they wouldn't have any other better options when it comes to snacks. For everyone else, to be honest, gluten-free biscuits might contain lots of sugar, they may be high in carbohydrates, sometimes even saturated fat. You know, these bring back so many childhood memories. But I know now not to overindulge in them, especially for young children. And the next time I go and buy a pack of biscuits, I'll be sure to pay extra attention to the fine print on the labelling. Next on Talking Point, I'm spicing it up with mala. I'll tell you exactly what's in this fiery numbing dish.